بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum and barakatuh to everyone and thank you for 33 subscribers because I know it doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people but I'm not a lot of people and you know like I said I just appreciate the support let's grow when I asked you guys to 25 you, you went beyond that because you're awesome and I love you so much and I love you for the sake of law and anyways let's get straight into this reaction you see the title this is something that I saw of course the three Muslims react to and I was so excited and yeah that's why I'm kind of wearing this ridiculous look right now I hope you like it uh I'm only showing you kind of like my own way of like kind of celebrating just saying thank you to say thank you guys for watching and tuning into my crazy self and you will probably never know how much it actually means to me so anyways without further ado let's get into this reaction i really don't have much else to say i mean i have a lot to say but i have two videos to edit before um the 24th which is monday you know before halloween and the other one i'm gonna look even crazier than i do now because i have my halloween costume which is just low red riding hood yeah, so I'll have a hood. Well, I, th I think I forgot the hood. But anyway, the point is, yeah, I'll be actually even more coming up, believe it or not. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to say a huge thank you guys. And just for, I don't even know, just for sticking around and listening to my crazy self. Like I said, I love you so much. I would be like, oh, okay, now I'm going to shut up and we're going to get into the video. Alright, so this video, and again, I watch, I think I already said this, I'm, I, I, I'm gonna say it now. I watched, of course, the three Muslims react to it first, and then I was like, whoa, because I thought it was clickbait, you know. And I just, because, like, that's what we're all doing a little bit halfway, you know, YouTubers, yeah. That's what we do, like, clickbait. A little, so, but I try not to, like, clickbait, because I want the real, you know, I want the real raw truth, you know, I want, I want, I, I want to know what's going on. So, oh, without further ado, I bring you Dr. Jordan Peterson invited to be a Muslim. Now, when I saw this title, I'm not going to lie, I was just like, I was like, there's no way, like, there's no actual way that, like, this is actually happening. I was like, this is totally clickbait. But as it would turn out, it's not. I actually love it. And inshallah, you guys will love it too. All right. Now, it doesn't mean that I know I called him, like, Big Daddy in my last video. Go watch it. I finally got a like on that. I think you guys thought I was a little too nice to join in, in that video, probably. I know it was a little weird. I know. I probably called him hot too many times. I don't know. Anyway, so here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it is on Muhammad Hijab's channel. So go check it out. He doesn't need any more subscribers. I'm just kidding. Go subscribe to him, Muhammad Hijab. And Jordan Peterson, sure, if you like, but only when he becomes Muslim, inshallah. Of course, he won't. But, well, we don't know. But, you know, he's a very stubborn guy. God talks about these kind of people, you know, all the time. But Your brothers and sisters in the Islam net from Norway are establishing a masjid, a dawah center. This center, this masjid, this educational institution will act like a beacon of light, calling the Muslims in Norway back to the essence of Islam. So give generously and Allah Azza wa Jal will give you even more. I said that, you know, from, from a Muslim perspective, the question that we're asked to ask is bring the evidence, yeah? If I were to bring reasonable evidence, which would satisfy some kind of probabilistic reasoning, that the Prophet Muhammad, we believe is the final prophet, right? That he was a true prophet. Would you be willing to become a Muslim? I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't dispute a priori the idea that Muhammad was a true prophet. Okay. But I don't understand what that means. So like what, obviously, yeah, yeah, so this yeah. is the way I'm going to look at this psychologically again. You know, it's people are granted revelations, and it's obviously the case. Let's speak empirically. Mm -hmm that the revelation of Muhammad yeah. united a fractious society. And so it was a uniting revelation. Now, how to conceptualize, but it's not a universally uniting revelation, at least not yet or yeah. not now, because we're not all united. So no, why? But, but well, why, maybe we didn't understand but, but, the revelation but, 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 problem. Is, That's is, one is, possibility. Is the presupposition what you're saying that unity is the ultimate objective? Well, not exactly, you know, because okay. then you have the problem of uniformity that you, you pointed out. No, no, out, even, right? even, even the idea of unity itself. I mean, is, is there Well, not... we talked about, okay, so No, unity is a great... This. So pause. Is this guy just here for, like, moral support? I don't know, but I remember, like, they, that the three Muslims, like, they were there, like, making, like, they were, like, making jokes because, like, he was, like, here in the video one minute, and then, like, the next minute he was gone. So I was like, is he actually here for commentary? Because, um, from what I can remember, he didn't never said a word. He literally moved his chair and left. <laughs> Why were you here? Maybe he spoke earlier. I don't know. When, once they kind of started the video, I was kind of just like jumped into everything. So, 
maybe you know, like maybe he was like done talking and he was like okay i'm gonna go like make some tea <laughs> i don't know i would have been like, i'm sorry <laughs> Just to be clear, yeah. I believe that unity is a great objective, yeah. but I don't think it's the all-defining one. For example, um, if, there's a, if there is an injustice that is so great that disunity is more appropriate, then I can imagine situations where disunity is probably better than unity. Right. I'm sure you can as well. For example, like in well, the Soviet that, Union. That would be a false unity in yeah, some yeah, sense, Yeah, exactly. Right? So right? that's what we're Well, that's why about. you wanted to address the elephant under the yeah, car yeah, right away. Exactly. We can't have a false peace. Exactly. And we but, can't incorporate things we can't yet incorporate. Yes. Uh, no. what, what, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because I feel like it's my duty as a Muslim, especially in the mosque, right, to, to, to tell you that um, as Muslims, we believe that the previous dispensations, as they were like Christianity and Judaism, they are part of our faith in a sense. Not in the sense of believing the doctrines and all of that kind of thing, like we obviously don't believe in original sin or the, the resurrection, the crucifixion, all these kind of things. We don't believe in any of that. Or the Trinity, yeah, of course. Um, but in the sense that we do believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in all of the Old Testament prophets, most of them, if not all of them, you know, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and so on. And we believe that each prophet was sent with two things. The message, which is to believe and worship in one God, and some kind of evidence to indicate their truthfulness. So with, for example, Moses and Jesus, we know what their miracles are, splitting the scene. And we believe that actually happened historically, right? I, we have no qualms with that. We don't have this kind of materialistic viewpoint on the issue. Uh, with Muhammad, sallam, we believe that his, because he was sent to all of humanity, he had to have a, an evidence base that would satisfy not just the eyes. In other words, it wouldn't be just something that could be witnessed. It would be something that can be interrogated and scrutinized for all times and places. So it would be an auditory revelation. In this case, it's the Qur'an. The Qur'an means a recitation. Yeah? So the, the central message of the Qur'an is Tawheed, or the idea of worshipping one God and believing in one God, as we've mentioned. But there are some, there is an attempt in the Qur'an to challenge, like for example, there's something called the falsification test, or the inimitability test. The Qur'an says, for example, that try and find a contradiction within the Qur'an had it been from other than God, la wajadu fi ikhtilaf and kathir, would have found in it many contradictions. It's the, this inimitability challenge is to produce something as sophisticated as it in terms of the linguistic composition as well as the structural component. Um, this is very interesting because now even Western academics like uh, Angelica Neuris and others have said that this, met, this challenge has not been met. It's a German uh, orientalist. She's recently said this. Um, so this is another thing. And then you have a range of prophecies, for example. Like if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 21, it's mentioned in the Bible that one of the mark, hallmarks of a true prophet is that, or a false prophet is that when they talk about the future, that it will be false. But the Quran makes very specific, very specific prophecies about the future. For example, in chapter 30, verse 2 to 4, it says, غُلِبَتْ الرُّمْ فِي أَدْنَ الْأَرْضِ وَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ that the Romans had been defeated. At that time, there was the Sassanid Empire and the Roman Empire, and they were in war with each other. And that from three to nine years, that they would defeat the enemy, you see? It gave very specific timelines, it gave very specific, and this was a very risky type of uh, prediction, because if you got it wrong, then it would endanger and undermine the entire prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad. But it did happen, and in fact, you'll find historical things which are not even in the Quran. And Rome was defeated? That Rome, no, that the that Persians, sorry, that the Romans had been defeated by the Persians in a battle, yeah, okay. uh, and so that's it's mentioned, for example, the Chronicles of Theophanes, which is a primary source material outside of the Quran Sunnah. Um, you can find it now; it's even translated into English. He he clearly mentions that um, eight years after this particular prediction took place, it did ha happen like that. So we have a range of predictions, even that relate to the current day. The Prophet said that the the barefooted Arab, there will be uh, competing for the highest building that sexually transmitted diseases would be proliferated as a result of people having intercourse outside of marriage and that and that's something I actually wanted to talk about I was like oh my gosh I was like thrown off taken aback because I just I noticed that like I, I know like a lot of Muslims like they even people as educated as Muhammad Hijab they don't oh, nearly say me I'll be pleased with them. <laughs> Anyways, they don't like talk about this particular aspect of Islam. It's like they don't mention how like yo sexually transmitted diseases are a thing. Look at me pre demonetizing myself. But anyway, I don't care. Look at you because you guys. Oh well, speaking of monetization, if you guys could support my, because oh, I didn't plug in my last video because I mean 
that's how selfless I am. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, actually, I'm not. So I don't mind asking you guys to go check out my merch, um, my new uh, fall slash winter line of clothing, completely halal, even though it's kind of up to you what you do with the clothing. It's just hoodies and shirts. Okay, so if you would like, please go check the link below. I'll have maybe a video of an example here to show you guys what is available um, in my shop. And I, I you know, so that inshallah I'll be able to have enough money to like um, have it be like directly from my own website so I don't have to use this third party website but for right now I'm using a third party and yes I do still get things but anything I get I will still put towards the channel and charity and yeah maybe I'll like buy a better like mask or something I don't know <laughs> So you guys, if you don't mind, you guys, you know, check that out for me. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's any improvements I can make. Just be brutally honest with me, you guys. And I'm trying to keep everything in the hell out because I love you guys. And I just wanted to bring you something different anyways. And I thought what better way than to just mention it in the video. So anyway, it's up to you if you want to check it out. Thank you so much for all the support so far. I can't thank you enough. There's like bro like I, every time i just see a comment i just get all happy anyways i love you guys okay that was enough introduction for today i just want to talk about that like really quickly it's just like sex and transmitted disease like we have another one we have a new one it's called monkeypox i don't know if you've heard of it and it's just come to my state and it's like the fact that it's like affecting all these people and it comes from like some other area and it's kind of seemingly new it's like people can like theorize all they want about it being manufactured but the fact of the matter is god is allowing them to happen because we've been had aids we've been had hiv which you know can turn into aids we've been had like um i don't know chlamydia and all the other stuff we've already had that for like years and it's like Sodom and Gomorrah anybody and if it's like any proof that it's anyone that like commits overly sexual immor immorality like acts like even I have been scared at one point you know I've had to be careful because of my past like to make sure that you know nothing like that happened to me I mean I've been incredibly blessed and nothing like that has ever happened to me but I did have a scare you know so you have to be careful it's it's amazing that a Muslim is finally like talking about just even bringing that up because even just bringing that up can like spread awareness that like yes even God has mentioned this or even Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has mentioned this somewhere in a hadith perhaps verified or not that indeed as we can see with our own two eyes sexually transmitted diseases are a thing um probably as a punishment I don't know about you guys but I would think it's a punishment because a lot of us commit sexual immorality even if we don't realize that that's what we're doing you know all this friends with benefits crap or like i'm not ready for marriage something else i'm doing <laughs> i'm ready for marriage stuff yeah it sucks um but you can't force anyone right so we're dealing with this like relationships haram relationships whatever that we don't know what to do with and then it, as a result you know you have to be careful you have to stop being afraid to ask people to get papers from the hospital and showing that they're clean because yeah i know they can fake it but like nine times out of ten like you should just be brave enough to go to the hospital with them or like you know be able to tell that it it has a real signature on it just not be afraid to ask in the first place to, to you know to get tested or like you know, whatever we need, need to be able to talk about this sort of thing and it's obviously a punishment i don't know if you can say it's a punishment directly by god to warn us i would call it a warning god would probably prefer that i call it a warning because i don't want to speak for him but I will call it a warning. I'll call it like a warning, but like, you know, like anyone who's like trying to, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just, yeah. So, it, it, you know, it's important to be aware of that sort of thing. And that's why marriage is so important. Uh, but I don't feel like talking about that right now because I don't feel like being depressed right now. So <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. Yeah. Hi, on home. Um, if you're watching this, he's probably not. Anyway, I love you guys. So I'm just going to continue with the video. I just want to say that because I, it's just something that's been weighing heavily on my mind. I was like, no, how come nobody talks about how this is act obviously a warning don't be like having some ex with everybody <laughs> not everybody but you know like just like without the love involved okay i hold it below. i'm gonna continue and that this would be something that would be uh diseases that had never been there in the past uh, the like monkeypox interest-based economy that we live in is mentioned by the problem house i said in the future interest will be everywhere in lem takulhu in lem yakulhu asabatu min ghubare Whoever does not consume it, he will not be able to evade its dust. So th this is another thing. So for example, um, you've got a range of prophecies where Islam will spread country by country. Where, you know, this is mentioned. He's going to go... Uh... So six minutes in, I'm going to skip to the end and see what he says. And then we're going to go to the 12 minute video, which is the last video to react to on Muhammad Hijab's channel. Because I don't want to spend uh, too much time since I've already been talking in between. I met a couple of Orthodox Jews in New York, yeah. and they said to me on the street that 
they call me rabbi, which was it's a hell of a thing to hear. That like made me so emotional. I was like, because I that's the one thing I love about Jordan Peterson. I have to admit, whatever. Like I follow from him like everyone else. Like I have to admit, this guy, he's just a human, he's not special, but I like how emotional he is. Like how emotional he it like emotionally vulnerable. It's such a beautiful thing. Like we don't see that with guys all the time, you know? So we're gonna get to the next part of the video. It is called Jordan Peterson questioned on message to Muslims. He's questioned on the message to Muslims. So let's see what that's about. 12 minutes. This center, this masjid, this educational institution will act like a beacon of light, calling the Muslims in Norway back to the essence of Islam. So give generously and Allah Azza wa Jal will give you even more. Mm. I, but, it is uh, not uh, obvious uh, to me that uh, I... Let me kind of push back a little bit on yeah. that point because you're an individual like, obviously in your newest book, you're, you're talking very um, categorically about precision. And I would say you're an individual that is very precise. You're categorized like if I was say anything, I would say that you're an individual that's scrupulously meticulous in exactitude and, I don't know, meticulousness or whatever, yeah? So you speak and you think about what you're going to say before you say it. That's what you're known for. And in fact, if someone says something which is uh, kind of off the market a little bit, you pull them up for it, right? And you, you know, usually because I don't understand it then. Yeah, no, for example, like the Kathy uh, Newman interview, like the assumptions and the questioning that she had, she had when she was questioning you, you pulled her up on it. And that's why it became so... Uh, popular, the discussion was so popular, and you're a clinical psychologist. So what I was going to say is this, for example, if I were to make a video, right, I say this message to the, you know, to white Canadians or something, yeah, yeah. and I said, you know, it's hard to talk to them, I say, look, you know, um, tentatively, why don't you reach out to some Russians, you know, or, you know, heaven forbid, you know, reach out to the black Africans or First Nation people, or, you know, whatever it may be. What do you, how do you think the community of white Canadians, let's say, for the sake of argument, will react to that kind of message. If well, if it was you, yeah. well, you're pretty disagreeable, so you'd probably get bit back a lot. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> I don't, I don't, it's yeah. hard to say until you do it, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, I have reached out to other communities, let's say. I did an interview with a friend of mine who's a Native American carver mm -hmm. who lives on the West Coast, and, you know, I'm not very happy with the narrative that's being promoted in Canada, which is that the European... Um, settlement of Canada is best viewed as genocidally colonial. And having said that, my friend, this carver, was in a residential school in Canada, and the residential schools were put forward by the government um, in an attempt, and other institutions, in an attempt to separate the indigenous children from their families and then socialize them rapidly yeah. according to European norms. And there was some positive motivation for that, and sometimes that helped and worked, but one of the things that did happen was that some schools were, let's say, invaded by people of a pronounced pedophilic and, mm. and sadistic bent, and mm -hmm. my friend ended up in one of those schools, and his life was so dreadful that mm -hmm. you can't even hear about it without, without, without serious emotional damage. And yeah. so you know, I went forward with that discussion, and it was very contentious, but it went very well, and mm -hmm. it... it it told a story that was true and needed to be told. Yep. And so, you know, you step into foreign territory at your peril, that's mm. for sure. But, you know, and it was relatively difficult for me to arrange for this to be a possibility. Yeah, of course. And, and, but my, my thought, again, because I'm trying to look for what we have to offer each other mm -hmm. rather than what divides us, I thought it yeah. was worthwhile. Well, you know, so, let me push back again once, yeah. once again on this point. So, for example... It's not always what you say. Sometimes it can be what you don't say. So, for, for instance, I think you've become somewhat of an emblem of Western civilization, right? In terms of you're an intellectual. Heaven help us. <laughs> no, but you have. And I, I also push back on the point that this is a foreign culture because I think that Islam, and you've mentioned this in the lecture as well, that Islam has now become part of, like, you know, Western culture. Yeah, well, sense, that's the open question. As, yeah, yeah. as we noted in the introductory remarks, it's like, yeah. well, are, is Islam part of the West? We're kind of having the same discussion about mm. Russia in some real yeah, sense. Yeah. And yeah. that's really good. I'm going to skip a little bit because they just kind of go on about this topic and I'm going to go into an area in the video where they talk more uh they get a little bit back to Islam just so bear with me okay so this is where he's talking about human history a little bit and they're gonna get back sort through morally all of us walk on blood-soaked ground mm -hmm. 
because hi human history is in some regards a nightmarish catastrophe mm -hmm. and some of that's just because life was so difficult but it's also because people did in unbelievably cruel and malicious and deceptive uh, committed committed unbelievably cruel and atrocious and deceptive acts and so we're all stuck with this problem that here we are in relative peace and harmony so far although we seem to be doing everything we can to try to disrupt that at the moment and part of the price that's being paid for that is an endless litany of historical catastrophe and then we all have to face up to well, what does that mean for us in terms of our individual responsibility and how do we construe ourselves and our society in light of that fact mm -hmm. and we could go back and forth continually about whose historical atrocities were worse and that's a rough contest because you know the devil is definitely in the details there and then it also brings up the other problem which is well when the Spaniards went to Central America uh, a lot of the bloodshed they produced or the death they produced was actually a consequence of the introduction of disease because that took out about 95 percent of the native population in the western hemisphere and then the conquistadors were well maybe they weren't the finest representatives of the of the highest flowering of western civilization we don't know what to what degree they were the sort of thugs that couldn't get along at home and went out adventuring and and then and and even if I say attempted to take full responsibility for that I'm not sure what it would mean because I suspect I have a lot more in common with you people in the modern world than I do with Spanish conquistadors from 300 years ago mm -hmm. now I'm not saying I bear no responsibility for the bloodshed of the past but I would say we all bear that responsibility and that's something I would say that's something like the conception of original sin. Yeah, and that's the point you know? of difference. Uh, to, be, yeah. to be honest, I would disagree with that point. Like, as a Muslim, there is a verse in the Quran that says, mm -hmm. zero to zero ukhra, that one soul should not bear the responsibility of someone else's actions. Yeah, well, that, that's the other ethical complication. Yeah, yeah. It's so, like, so you know, I, I, can you call yeah. me out yeah, in relationship no, to no, the no, atrocity I, of the of past? Course, of course and, not. No. Well, yeah, what, but, but it's yeah. complicated, right? Because, yeah. but, because at the same time, you do say, and I don't mean you yeah, personally, yeah, yeah. but... You know, we can say things like, well, the West is not bearing sufficient responsibility for its colonial past. And so at some level, that kind of devolves down to the individual. It's so like, let, well, me, let me kind of rephrase it then. I think, you know, I think that's more of a left-wing criticism. It's like, you know, it's reparations and affirmative action yeah, programs. Also. Yeah. I'm not advocating any of that. And nor yeah. Do I even yeah, nor am I. Because, like, to be honest, you guys, if we're going to, I'm sorry, I'm just interjecting, like, randomly here after we were having like, a nice, yeah. Uh, but I just want to say, like, if we're going to get reparations for, like, black people like my people um i'd rather it be from people like the, the, the kkk i nearly said the uk okay no <laughs> reparations for like the kkk um and like groups like that like who claim to be christian actually if you don't know uh yeah but like regular white people giving us reparation no i would have to say i also disagree it's just a random point i wanted to make like a lot of my people you know they tend to think that blm you know black lives matter is like all about like you know helping us and i think that it is it's been crapped on enough like you know it probably actually has some truth to it you know um however yeah i would have to admit like the whole reparations thing if you've heard of it yeah i mean only from groups that would that like, should be giving us money basically but it wouldn't it wouldn't take away all the atrocities that they've done to us so even that money that they'd be giving us wouldn't be enough you know what i mean it's like almost paying off us for our silence and just yeah i don't actually really agree with reparations either i thought i did and nor yeah. do i even believe in any yeah. of that to be honest with you nor me yeah so what what i was putting as an alternative to that is this is that there is this kind of i would call this maybe an orientalist a new orientalist narrative which states that islam is incapable of xyz call it tolerance call it whatever it is and look at what's happened in Islamic history. You've, you've got all of these deaths and you've got all of these kinds of things that are happening comparative to what we have in the West. And what we're saying is that let's look at what you have in the West because liberalism was an ideology that was started in the 17th century. Like, I mean, really it was crystallized, you know, with John Locke and all these kind of things then. And after liberalism was established, and in fact, the constitution and fact, the documents of the founding fathers and stuff like that were based on the liberal secular principles. Even after that, you had Napoleonic Wars. Even after that, you had col colonialism continue. You had slavery continue until 1867, whatever it was, you know, the American Civil War ended. Um, so, so what we're saying is that this, 
picture of history that, you know, the West is best, basically, this idea, because our ideology can fix all problems, it's not reasonable when you look at the historical records. I mean, one, of, um, one scholar called Navid Sheikh actually done, a, done a, a piece, it's called Body Count, and he was counting the amount of people that died in each uh, civilization, and he put the, the Western civilization as the highest. And because you have things like World War I and World War II, and these things were, World War I and World War II were nationalistic conquests. They, they, they were not religiously inspired. I mean, you can, you can argue to what extent were World War I and World War II religiously inspired, but certainly Islam didn't, was not a main feature of the 30 million people that died in, in World War I or however many, many million people died in World War II. So the point is, is that we're saying is that, uh, and obviously you've got concepts in the West like manifest destiny, and which I think every single president of the United States of America believed in, westward expansion, these kind of things. The, the point is, is that the proposition that the ideology of the West can fix our problems, this is what we have an issue with, because what we're saying is that if we look at the historical record, there is no evidence of that. In fact, what it's shown us is that there's more bloodshed. Individualism has caused more death. Like, you know, with all due respect, I know that you, you, you do cherish individualism. I'm not saying everything is bad about it, but it, when, when, when you have a society deplete of a communitarian ethic, is bereft of a communitarian ethic, then you can have these issues. And uh, so, so these are conversations, are, and I think you are moving towards the communitarianism. In your newest book, you were talking about institutions and these kind of things and the respect for tradition and these kind of things. I'm not sure if I'm reading you correctly, but these are the kinds of conversations I think we need to have. But on that point, I think, I, I don't want it, this to be interrogative. Okay, so you guys, that's the end of the video. I don't know so much. Goodbye. No, I, I, I do want to say, like, one more thing. I just want to say, like, this is so formative. And, oh, I almost forgot. The full video, the hour and 30 minutes video. Yeah, that's actually on Jordan B. Peterson's uh, page. So if you want to go check that out, um, you see it on the screen here. And I'll leave it in the link below. And uh, making it work for myself. No. <laughs> Well, we've been like, how hard is that to do? <laughs> no, but yeah, if you want to watch an entire, like, almost two hour video, I know I'm going to go watch it right now because I actually didn't know it was already on his channel, which is what, you know, Jordan Peterson does. You know, he interviews people and then he has his people uploaded to his channel. I don't know. I would have been like, like, we all know that. So I didn't realize that there was a full length video on his channel already for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I've been obsessed with the three Muslims. Go subscribe to them. I still love them. Uh, they could tone down it toned down a bit on the thumbnails so like they think you know for the sake of a lot but anyways you guys i could use my own advice now muhammad Jinjab, go subscribe to him this video my opinion okay back to my opinion on this video i don't know like i just feel like it was like really informative again if you want to watch these videos i'll have his channel or the link to both of the videos down below i'm pretty sure you guys can just type in muhammad Jinjab. it's been a lot it was just uploaded october 18th both of them so there's you know they're that new so that you should see them at the top of his page all right by the time i post this video <laughs> so inshallah but you will find them but you guys what i personally think is just that jordan pearson as much as i don't think he's gonna actually become muslim muslim like i didn't see the part where he was asked like i don't know why i didn't see that part it's probably towards the end of the last video so i'm so sorry you guys <sighs> i am so sorry like i may have skipped over it like I'll just like include it in here somewhere so that you guys can see. I guess I'll include it at the end so that you guys can see that particular part of the video. I hope that I'm able to find it because I didn't mean to skip over it. It was like where they really discussing contentiously now. Mm -hmm. You know, they make for rough conversations, but they make, and you have to do that in a spirit of ignorance. You know, like I was hoping to come here today and well, and listen, I talk a lot. There's my how to feel the right way forward. I think part of it is. Well, first of all, to find commonalities, we believe in, in the fundamental necessity of a uniting book across the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim faiths. That's not nothing. Okay. Like, that's a strange thing to insist upon, and yet we all seem to agree. I actually asked him, so we become Muslim, and he was, I, I mean, he did ask, like, fair, he did ask, but I mean, like, when he got, like, kind of, like, emotional, and, like, he, he was, like, kind of happy, like, I don't know how to describe, I don't know why I couldn't find that part of the video, that was really weird. But to be honest, you guys, um, if I can find it, I'll put it, and you know, he started laughing. It was just such a nice moment, because in all honesty, we would like to him, like I said in my last video about Peterson, we would like him to be, become Muslim for the sake of a lot, like for his, the sake of his soul, really. <sighs> Only the Lord knows what he's going to do with his soul. La uh, Alam, right? But in any case, I, you know, I just wish the best for this man, you know, he's a little crazy, but... He is smart, and I just hate to see people with such nice brains go to 
I can't say go to waste. <laughs> that sounds mean. That sounds mean. But yeah. Anyways, you guys. Again, thank you so much for 30 subscribers. I love you guys so much. And I have to go uh, edit this video. <laughs> Anyways, I don't really even know what else I want to say. Except thank you so much for all the support um, that I've been getting lately. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I can't stop saying it. Oh my gosh. Anyway. So, I just want to say a quick... Um, I don't know. I guess that's it. I was going to say a quick thank you to everyone who has also been liking my videos. Someone went through and like liked all my videos. Thank you for that. And again, if you have any suggestions below, like I always tell you guys, leave them in the comment section and go ahead and email me. My email will be at this at the, on the end screen. It's like after I'm done talking, yada, yada, yada. And if you're still here, I don't know why, like, um, go do the dishes or something. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Um, I just feel like there's something missing that I was supposed to say, but anyways, inshallah, I'll remember later. And I will come back to tell you guys, this is not going to be my last video. Now, uh, my sister Jordan Pearson, become Muslim and, and stop playing around. Stop playing with your soul because on a real note, guys, it's not something to be played with. All right. That's pretty much all I had to say about that, you guys. Um, again, if, if you have any of your own stories you'd like to share with me that maybe you'd like me to like tell the people about, like for an Iman booster or people who are new to Islam and you want me to tell your story, um, I would love to do that for you as well. So, okay, leave any um, suggestions you have down below or message me privately at my email uh dini streets at gmail.com okay i love you so much and yeah i would have been